Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another watercolor video for you. Today I thought I would share this square vase that I did for the Art Impressions Watercolor Weekend a few weeks back. I know I've been kind of MIA lately, so I thought I would edit this video and try to get it up as soon as possible. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a little while. So my mother and I went to Foxwoods and I saw some beautiful flower arrangements so I wanted to recreate them with my watercolor. So we took a picture and that's what I'm showing you here is my inspiration. So now I'm going to start with the vase and I'm just going to lightly draw some lines in. This is where I want, I'm going to start filling it up with the foliage and the flowers and I want to make sure that I do this really light because I'm going to end up erasing it and then drawing them in with marker. So I'm going to start from the top down and I thought the top of those, the top of the vase had some some sticks or some pieces of wood that looked like branch trees to me or birch trees to me. So I'm going to use this stamp but I'm only inking up one of the birch trees. Now I already stamped it, I know it's hard to see there. I positioned it where I wanted it and now I'm going to stamp it down. I stamped this in the sepia. So now I'm doing the same thing but I'm inking up a totally different branch. And I'm going to position that kind of where I want it using my positioner again. Now I'm not re-inking in between, I'm just huffing on it and then stamping it down. So I'll put the second one in here and then I'll use my brush and some water to pull the color out from the outside because the, branch tree, the birch trees are white. So you don't want to be pulling the color into them, you want to be pulling the color on the outside out. This will give them the dimension you're looking for. So now the next one I'm going to take is one of the little branches from the new branches set and I'm inking that up with some sepia as well. And I'm just going to stamp it here and there, just make sure, making sure I somewhat stay in the, within the boundaries of that vase that you can kind of see at the bottom. That's kind of a guideline to, to let me know where I wanted to stamp everything. And I'm just putting a few here and there. Now I'm using one of the small vines and I'm just putting a few here and there. I ink this up with some olive green. And I'm just kind of putting them below all of those branches. Now I didn't add any water to the branches, I'm just adding water to those the greens. And I'm just softening out those lines. I'm kind of planning as I go, I'm keeping my phone as a reference on, to, you can't see it, it's off camera. But I'm kind of looking at what it, what it looks like and how close I am. So now I'm using one of the vines from the new foliage set. This is the one that if you look at it, it looks like the vines are growing upwards. I kind of just turned it upside down and stamped it a couple times just so that it looked like there was a, a different kind of vine coming in the front of this, um, this little vase. So now I'm taking the, it's the Daisy Bunch stamp and I'm inking it up with some iris purple. I know it looks pink, but iris purple is pink. And I'm not stamping it, I'm just stamping it once and I'm re-inking and then I'm getting another one because I want those flowers to be kind of sporadic. I don't want to create a bunch of flowers, I'm just putting flowers here and there because that's what was in the picture. And then I won't, I'll do some second generation stamping whereas I'm not re-inking, I'm just putting some lighter ones in there. Now I'm just adding some water to them. Just to pull some of that color out of the lines. And I'm really staying kind of close to them. I don't want them to spread out because I really want them to look like they're buds. So now I'm kind of looking back and looking at what I, you know, where do I want something else to go. Now I'm going to put that leaf those those vine back on my on my block and I'm going to ink it up with some more olive green and then I'm going to fill it in a little bit more. I thought it needed a little bit more green up in the top of it just to make it look a little more lush. 
So I'm going to ink that up and put that or not. <laughs> right now I'm actually, I'm taking one of, there's a stamp that looks like a fern. I think it's a fern. And I'm inking it up with some bottle green. Bottle green is more of a bluish green, not like a pine green. It's kind of a bluish green. So I wanted to get that different color in there. And I'm putting that on the sides of those flowers in the vine. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of water to, this, to that before I move on. I kind of got a little lost. I did this video a long time ago, so it's not fresh in my mind. But I really like the color. This bottle green is really, really a cool, a cool bluish green color. And I thought that went great with the olive green and the pinks. So before I tell you something wrong again, I think I'll wait. <laughs> I'm actually, this is where I'm going to add some more vines or into the middle of that, the middle of those, um, those branches just to give a little more green and a little more color. No, I'm stamping it a couple times. I do want to, I do want some depth in there. And then I'll add some water to it. I haven't been doing videos. As you noticed, I've been kind of MIA. I got a full-time job and it's taken up a lot of my time. I'm, I was semi-retired for a little while there, I like to say. Uh, and I've been working part-time for many years, so I had lots of time to do videos and, and projects. And then I just started this full-time job and I still really haven't figured out a schedule where I can fit this in. It's not making me very happy, but it is what it is. So I'm hoping to get more on a, a schedule with some more videos. So now I'm just taking, the, I've, if you notice, I've drawn a little dot at the bottom of the page. That's what I'm lining my ruler up with. And I'm now coming in with the, the fine point of my sepia. Now I'm not drawing this really, like I'm not pushing really hard. I'm just trying to get some color down so that I can pull it out of the lines. And I'm lining my ruler up with that point so that the perspective of the left and right of this vase is somewhat, somewhat natural because they're both coming to that point. And then I'll use my straight edge and just draw the bottom. It's very easy to create a vase like this. So now I'm going to take the vase and I'm going to take my water and I'm going to pull out the color from the left and the right and the bottom to make the, to give the vase a little more depth and make it look round. I don't want it to look like I drew it in. I want it to be round. So I'm just pulling that color right out of the lines into the middle of that vase. When you're doing something like that, as you see here, I'm actually adding some, some additional color underneath those blooms to give them a little bit of a shadow and I'll, I'll wet my brush and I'll try to pull some more color out but you always want to put the color down on the left and the right and then pull it into the center so that the center maintains a highlight that's what's going to give your vase a three-dimensional look and I put some I put some additional color on my palette and then I'm just going to pull it in so I'm going to start with the darkest color on the edges and then I'm going to try to soften it into the middle. And I'm also going to jump my brush around a little bit so that it gives a little more texture and not just an up and down feel, I guess. Just gives a little more texture and a little more interest to the base. Adding a little more color here. And you'll see I'll if I feel like I have too much color on my brush or it's too dry, I'll just put a little bit more water and then come back in. It is going to be a little darker where those blooms are because the flowers are creating a shadow. And then I'll pull a little bit from the bottom. Once this is dry, I'll come back in and I'll add a little more color just to 
Sometimes when you're layering, you want it to dry in between and then put another layer of color up, layer of color on. So here I am creating a little mask for my face because I'm going to stamp some bricks below it. So I'm just drawing enough for me to see where the vase is and then I'm going to fussy cut it out with my scissors. This is just to protect the vase when I go to stamp down the bricks. I don't want the bricks to stamp over, over my vase because then it would look ridiculous. You kind of want it to look like it's sitting on the bricks. So I'll come back in and I'll put the little my little mask on. And I'm going to ink up my bricks with some sepia. And I'm going to use my stamp positioner in order to make sure that I get it in the right get them in the right place. I want to make sure I get some behind and some in the in the in the foreground so that it looks like it's not just sitting on a uh, a ledge of bricks it looks like it's sitting in the middle of the bricks which is why you want to put the vase the mask on to protect it so here I am just stamping that and I'm gonna sh move that around until I'm happy with it and then I will huff on my stamp as opposed to re-inking it and then I'll just stamp it down. Now you're not using a ton of pressure with these stamps because you don't want to mash it into the paper. You just want to do lightly so that you can get the, the idea of those bricks underneath this, this little vase. And then you just pull the color out of the lines. With, with the vases and the cobblestones, what you want to do is you want to pull out the color in between each of those little bricks or cobblestones so that way the white space creates a multi-dimensional look. You don't want to just put color all over them because then they won't look like they're popping up. So if you if you pull the color out from underneath them, it gives them more depth and it makes them look more dimensional. So those ones in the front will look, will be a little darker and you just want to pull that color right out. And you can see it, it already looks like it's popping off the page. Now you can add a little more color if you want to. You can, you can mix colors. If you use an African violet with your sepia, it creates a really nice gray color, which is really great for any kind of cobblestone or brick. Now I'm just taking a little more color out of my off my palette just to give that a little bit more from behind and creates a little bit of a shadow. And then I'm just softening it out. Again, when I'm putting this color in, I'm, I'm being careful to stay underneath those bricks or between them. Every once in a while, I'll put a, a little bit on top just to give, the, give it a little more character, a little more interest. So now I wanted the bottom of that vase to really stand out, so I'm adding a little more color now that the vase is dry and just pulling some more color into the middle. As you notice with watercolor, whether it's pens or, or markers or watercolor paints, as things dry, they tr tend to lighten up. So you need to do additional layers just to make sure you get a nice vibrant color. And sometimes I tend to be a little too detail oriented, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> So now I'm going to come in, I put a little bit of color on the tip of my brush and I just wanted to give those birch trees just a little more color, make them stand out a little bit more. And then I always kind of sit back and look at my project and make sure that I'm happy with it if there's nothing else I need. 
So now I've decided I'm happy with it and I'm going to come in and I'm going to sign it. You want to make sure your paper is good and dry. So I'm going to sign and date. And then I thought it looked a little stark white. So I wanted to put a little bit of color in the background. So the color that I put in the background, I'm going to use a blue. And I think it's slate blue that I used. And it could be that it could be a sky behind it. That doesn't look like slate blue. That's actually like a, um, probably more like a, a manganese or a light blue. Not really sure what color I use there. I'll link all of my supplies on my blog and at the, at the bottom of this video as I normally do. So as you can see, I'm adding some water and then I'll take my paper towel and I'll blot some of that up. I kind of got a little heavy handed and I wanted to lighten it up a little bit. But this could be, it could be a wall behind, behind the vase, it could be sitting outside, it could really be anything, it's just, it's whatever your imagination, wherever your imagination takes you. So I'm going to add a little bit more water and a little bit more color. And it's just like the idea of something being behind it so it didn't look so, like I said, stark white. <laughs> this could even be a wall behind it, a shadowed wall. And I'm just adding a little bit more color and a little bit more water just to give it some interest and then I'll sop it up. So that's it. That's our project for today. I really enjoyed doing this project and I hope you will try you will you will try try your own project and your own vase ideas. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to do some more videos soon. I've linked a couple more videos here for you and as always if you want to see more videos just hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much and have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.